Hello, Craig. Thanks for meeting me today. As you know, I'm Daniel Charles, working at WaterAid. I'm Special Projects Manager. And that means that I have lots of contact with our supporters. And I try and find out about different parts of WaterAid's work um, to share with them that I think they'll be interested in, they may want to support. It'd be great if you could tell me a bit more about who you are and about Simile, because I think the projects you're working on in Timor-Leste could be of real interest to our supporters. Thank you, Daniel. And um, yeah, as, uh, as you said, it's great to finally uh, meet in person, virtually, uh, across the world. Um, so yeah, um, my name's Craig McVeigh. I'm the CEO of Simile. We're a small, innovative tech company. We all share a very common desire to bring technologies to places like East Timor, uh, to emerging uh, economies and, and low-income uh, countries bring technologies that will have an impact on the livelihoods of people. So what is the water issue you're trying to solve? What is the problem you're trying to solve? Water is a big issue. It's um, globally a big issue. And we know that um, more than 1 billion people globally uh, do not have access to safe and clean water. We know that typically most water supply systems are challenged in three areas. One is about local capacity, technical capacity to manage and operate systems. The other is about monitoring and having systematic monitoring programs in place that are, um, are regular and useful and have, are connected back to a central authority. And uh, thirdly, it's about distance. Uh, many communities that we work with are a long way from anywhere. And so, you know, communication is always a challenge. Great. So can you tell me a little bit more about Simile, how you started, why you came about? We started Simile in 2016. Uh, we saw that there was a lot of missed opportunities occurring in these parts of the world, and particularly in the development sector where the rest of the world was moving forward very quickly with uh, the internet of things, IoT, and cloud computing. Uh, and what was commonplace in Timor and uh, other emerging economies was that the technologies that were being applied was often you know, up to 10 years out of date. So what's so special about your approach? We're taking some of the technological developments uh, that are occurring around the world, but we're trying to make this achievable and available uh, in, in a very different context. And today we've been very successful. So how have you been implementing this with Wartrade? What have you been doing with Wartrade's projects? We've been lucky that uh, we've been in partnership with WaterAid for working with rural communities to monitor rural community water supply systems. But we've also been applying the same base technologies to disaster risk reduction work and the detection of flash floods, which have a significant impact on many uh, rural and remote mountain communities in Timor. We are also working uh, with government uh, in Timor around asset management, logistics and personnel management as well. So can you tell me a little bit more about how it all works? We have a cloud platform. The typical example uh, that we work with and using uh, a community water supply system is that we'll have uh, sensors um, in a, uh, a water tank that are measuring water level in real time. Um, and so we take a measurement about every five minutes at the moment. And so uh, over the span of the last seven months, in some systems, we have uh, over 75,000 data reads from one community water supply system tank. And so this data is, is captured locally and then it's uh, sent uh, via 3G, 4G connections to the cloud. That's where the analytics and the automated alerts and actions and notifications occur from. Okay, so yeah, wow, lot, lots and lots of data, lots of information. What, what do you do with that? How do you use it? What's the purpose? The technology is flexible enough that we can set these th uh, thresholds based on a per tank basis. Uh, and so it's um, something that we can, depending on who's managing the system, uh, we can have those conversations or those workshops uh, with those people to, to determine uh, what is the most useful thing for them in the management of the system and what is the most useful thing for them in terms of uh, potential maintenance issues that they need to know about. Is it possible for you to just share the type of thing that you see or they see? Um, it'd be great to have a look at it about, to understand how, how, how this information is used or collated. 
Okay, so, so what we're looking at here is the interface um, of our cloud-based uh, monitoring system. This version of it is for water supply systems. Um, and so you can see here in front of us a map of Timor as, uh, based on Google Maps. We can see here, these are the water supply systems that we're working with uh, WaterAid and Timor Leste on. And they're in the municipality of Lekisa. And Lekis is uh, a vulnerable area for climate change and for variability in uh, rainfall. As you can see, we've got a very uh, high mountain range that runs through the center. And most of the communities live up high uh, along that range. The groundwater systems here tend to be highly vulnerable to those changes in, in rainfall because they don't hold a lot of um, groundwater uh, supply or re uh, annual recharge. They tend to be annually recharged. So if you have one year, one season of below average rainfall, then communities might be quite vulnerable in the following year. We can also uh, look at the water supply tanks um, in uh, tabular view. Uh, we can also then click on these to get sort of rich data and information about each water supply system. And based on the information that we think is uh, important, we can sort of uh, add different fields of information connected to that water supply system. So um, government identification numbers, who manages it, when it was built, construction data, how many people um, was the system built to supply? So in this case, it was built to supply 36 people and from nine households and we know the source is a spring. There's also other important information for us uh, for um, setting up the analytics. So around uh, distance from the sensor to overflow, outflow, depending on the, the tank uh, shape and size, uh, we can add in those parameters so that we can calculate in real time how many liters of water is available to that community. How is the data you've collected for community used and what sort of impact has it had? And you can see here, I have the data set for the last December 16 through to July 29. You can see now actually it's, it's loading a new read of data uh, as we speak. We can see the data in, in graph form, it's automatically plotted. We're looking at percentage full over that period. And there's uh, 70,000 and uh, 821 data reads uh, over that time. This represents uh, one of the highest resolution data captures of a community water supply system, perhaps anywhere in the world. What we're looking at now is what types of questions can we put to this data that we can then start to automate some of these alerts and notifications from. from. What are you doing with that data at the moment? How are you using it? And so with any of these data sets, um, when we work with the communities, we can ask them about uh, what are the important points in the management of the system or the maintenance of the system for where, where they would like to be alerted based on the data that we're collecting. We can easily, um, a user can easily go here. We can, we can say we want to set up an early warning uh, around the percentage full or any of the other data. We go to set up. We can give it a name and we can say, um, you know, it's um, tank empty. And so then we just say if a tank is equal or less than 20% full, and then we can just say email the, uh, these users and we can then say we want the email to be in and we can create multiple versions of the one email in different languages. And we can type uh, the, the message here that automatically will then send to a predefined group of, of users uh, a message when the water tank hits 20% full. And we can do this for SMS. We can also set it up so if it's a multiple tank system and there's some mechanical devices controlling water flow, we can also set it up so that it will turn on uh, a tap on another system uh, or um, have an impact on the data set in another location. So it's very flexible in the way we can set this up and we can set up multiple actions based on that one threshold. Thanks, Greg. I, I love it. I, I love what you've just shown. 
I love the flexibility of it, the way you can have different settings, the way you can do different communications to people. It's, it's amazing and it's gonna have a massive impact on people's lives. What would be great to know is what the next steps are for the pilot and developing, development of this approach and your work with WaterAid. What uh, the next steps for the project are with WaterAid is that we're gonna start um, working with water managers uh, initially to work out um, at what point and what uh, that we need to set these thresholds so that they can receive uh, notifications by email and SMS uh, about the management or maintenance of these systems. Some of the other work that we're starting to do for the next six months with WaterAid is uh, we're expanding this net, current network uh, to another 10 systems uh, across Timor-Leste. What we've actually picked for the next systems is a peri-urban system. So it's a more complex system. It uh, um, has 10, uh, sorry, six tanks and 25 tap stands attached to it. And what we're also going to be doing is um, piloting and or integrating and piloting um, water meters. Um, and so we can meter water that's moving across the system uh, and to get a, a much clearer sense of how much water is being used um, and uh, where in the system. And also then start uh, doing some analytics around leak detection, which are all very important things for uh, water supply management. Thanks, Craig. I've really enjoyed speaking to you. Thank you so much for your time. It's so good to hear about the possibilities of this project and where it can go.